Okay, hello and welcome everyone to another Rambling Weekly and I know I did a poll yesterday, let me quickly check if everything's okay. I did a poll and asked for which video you want to be the next. My kind of phone awards for 2015 with tons of categories, I have a lot. Or the next Rambling Weekly. Right now, I'm not quite sure how many, like 60, I got 60 people who did choose. And it's 33, 57, 57 for the phone awards, but Dean Wallace was right. I should wait and include the 5X that I just got. I was recording the hands-on video right now. I did the first part, but right now it does all the updates and everything else. I will definitely need a lot more time. And I think... Why doesn't it see my fingerprint? Oh wait, maybe? Oh, battery is too low. And if you maybe saw that, I got the British version. So I don't even have a charger for Germany. Not quite sure how, will I, how I will be able to charge it. I guess I have a problem if my adapter doesn't work. But as it is, I will do a full checkup of this one before I'm doing the best of and that's why the ramblings today there are a lot of topics they will be here as always you can send in more pictures if you want to uncensoredtech at gmail.com and since I wasted all many already almost two minutes this brings me to my first topic I'm out thanks for being cool with it and I will check that off because I know these videos are completely odd <laughs> as I am and I'm totally Fine with it personally, but I'm really happy to see that you are as well because these videos lately get a lot more views than I expected, a lot more views than they got like half a year ago or so because they are hovering from strong 500 to even 700 and sometimes I see the older ones getting more than 1000 views with a lot of likes, which is really nice to see because if it has 500 views, it has 60, 70, sometimes 80 or more likes and yeah, thanks for that, because I'm quite sure not everyone <coughs> would listen to the shit I talk about, but I'm really happy you are happy with that. Second topic, the retake breakdown. <laughs> if you maybe saw, and I doubt you did, because the video didn't get many views yet, my video of my review of the Alienware 15, and what usually happens right now, how I do my reviews is... I make the detailed part first, get through everything, which usually takes like one good take if everything works fine, maybe maybe three or four if I have a little bit of a worse day. And usually once I get into the run, I have a flow, then things work out. <laughs> but this day, and what, what I do usually do then after that is make the intro, which usually is done in like five minutes, that's quite quick, and then the recap. And for the recap, I, I try always to be casual, but once I start to talk about the phone, there's always this retooling I want. And I told this on my last video, I think, on the Moto X. With my English, I always stumble upon words and I stumble upon... I, I in, my, in my brain, everything works out, but once I get it loud out, I stumble upon many words and I don't want all of this. And I still have a lot of them in my reviews, but I want, don't want all of that to have in my videos. And that's why I do retakes. And on that day, I did at least 50 retakes. I did some pauses in between to calm down. I was very... I was close about getting crazy and everything else. And just had to get that out. Okay. Next topic. Snapdragon 820 exclusive for S7 until April. So according to the newest rumors, or maybe it's even a little bit more by now, but it seems that the S7... We'll get the Qualcomm Snapdragon 820 exclusive or exclusive rights to use it first until April. And this is no good news because, okay, in some way it's good because then all the other manufacturers have a little bit more time optimizing maybe stuff, doing it right. Because if they have to do it or no, actually that's, that's not the case because they will have the phones already done. And maybe they have some time for optimizing and doing some background stuff, fixing a little few things. But other than that, they will, they have access to the A20. They just can't release any devices. But I'm not so happy with that because, of course, this will be a big thing 
if it's actually that good as it's supposed to be, then Samsung has definitely advantage. But maybe also not, because if they release the S7 with the A20 and the A20 is good, they slightly maybe had to rush it because the chip isn't really out for that long even though of course they have early access to everything like we see it but if the, all the manufacturers maybe take these one or two maybe three months that they have to wait until the releases and actually do work on optimizing the phones they could maybe then have the benefit and learn maybe from mistakes that the a7 did s7 so it's a hit and miss we will see about that okay the next point would be HTC X9 for real buttons and visor so I'm pretty sure you have seen and I won't show this anywhere off because I try to keep the editing here minimal because it takes already way longer than it initially did because I never did edit the video so the HTC X9 I'm pretty sure you've seen the videos it doesn't look bad definitely not at all but there are a few design elements that I can't seem to understand one thing would be the buttons why is HTC going back to buttons they were using on on screen buttons for quite some time and okay it's not the flagship and they kind of do some some of those things on non flagships but it doesn't make sense to go backwards in time again and I am not the biggest fan of capacitive buttons I'm okay with them but not if they are as visible as here and yeah the other thing is the visor <laughs> is that kind of they first copy apple again or some say they didn't copy them because they had the idea first but it looks way more like an iphone the a9 than any iphone looked like on hcc before so i'm i don't care what they copied or who copied them but everyone says they kind of got back to a apple and now they seem to copy the 6p with the visor okay it doesn't look like with the hump and so on but <sighs> Some of their choices lately are odd. Next topic, and I think I'm quite getting fast through the topics. Maybe that's a good thing, maybe that's a bad thing. Google does it every time, new S version, new annoyances. <clears throat> so, on my Moto X Pure that I got to review, I got the Marshmallow update and it happens every time there is a new OS. Google has to do some changes in the background that start to annoy me. And it's everything. Last time it was they changed something in the browser engine that didn't work out so well on some things. The, the one time before they did, it's everything. I just can't remember every time something happened, but it did. This time there are two annoyances. First of all, the first one is pretty much non-important or does, doesn't bother any normal non-YouTube creator. But at least for me, what I do a lot of times is on my phone, check my youtube dashboard to see the subscribers the views how the videos is doing and all that and what i usually do is i check click my bookmark the page loads and i see it what now happens for some reason on marshmallow it sees it's a youtube site therefore once i click the bookmark it opens and yeah it opens the youtube app but since I, as a standard app, chose the browser to open that, it does following. I open the bookmark, it opens YouTube, then switches quickly back to the browser, again to YouTube, and then shows me the site on my browser. And it also opens another app, a new app, every time I get, for example, from the dashboard to the video manager or to the analytics or to the comments, it opens a new tab every time and with the YouTube app. So I'm not quite sure what they were doing here and that's not just the case in my old browser it's the case for chrome it's the case for every browser very annoying of course only if you are a youtube creator and are obsessed with the dashboard as i am the second thing is the notification drop down so what i usually do always is i have the long press in the middle of my border to drop down the notification yet especially on bigger phones that's really helpful because i don't have to go upwards and drop it down or if i don't have a notification uh, a nav bar item for that like on lg so it's super handy but for example on the moto x what happened is usually it opens like i would open it with my finger but for some reason on marshmallow it slides halfway very slowly and then it just plops out and that's an ugly design element also not pretty much anything that will bother anyone because i am one of the few ones that uses such a gesture so next topic android 6 sd adoptable storage 
I just read that today and I had to edit and that's quite odd because I read a lot of times already about that Android 6 now has an option to make your SD card internal storage or kind of adopt it as internal storage. But what I didn't know, because I, ex I for example, expected something like this to happen. If I have, for example, the Moto X Pure with 32 gigabytes and I buy myself a 64 gigabyte I thought I, it would combine, I would have 32 plus 64. But what seems to be actually the case is the internal storage gets completely ditched and you have 64. So unless you buy a lot of a bigger card, you won't even get more storage because if I would have the 16 gigabyte version, then it's actually less of an issue because you only miss out on 16 gigabytes. But if you have the 32 or 64 gigabyte version, then go for an SD card, you lose 32 or 64 gigabyte, which is already a downside. But maybe not so much if you then, for example, can buy the lower model, go for the 16 gigabyte and buy a 128 gigabyte SD. Then it's great. But what I didn't know also, since it doesn't use the internal storage anymore, which is usually a lot faster than SD cards, you will have a slower experience because SD cards usually aren't as fast as EMMC cards. There are some that are fast, but these are expensive as well. So you will have to pay a lot if you want fast and then more storage. But oh, that's a bit odd to see. Of course, that's definitely avoiding a lot of issues. And maybe that's also a reason why Google maybe could think about getting back to SD cards. But... For right now, because I just bought myself a 64 gigabyte, a really fast SD card, but just an SD card, the big one, not the micro SD card, that has 95 megabytes read and 87 megabytes of write speeds, which is super fast. And this is kind of the speed, or maybe half of it, at least, what you should have to get a comparable speed as you do on your phone. And these cards aren't cheap, but if even if they are fast, if they react as fast as the EMMC, because their sequential writes and read speeds maybe are fast, but the access times and everything else is, I think, a lot slower compared to the internal storage. And that's quite a bummer to see that they did choose to, to okay, they, like I said, they will avoid a lot of issues if you would combine it and use both, because then you would have some part on the SD, some part on the inbuilt storage, and that wouldn't work out so well. The idea is definitely cool, and you couldn't still use your SD card normally as you could ever. But, yeah, we will have to see. I'm quite interested, once I get something like a device like this, to actually <coughs> test that out. The next topic, uh, Amazon Affiliate. Okay, I just recently, maybe like a month ago, started to use or sometimes to drop in my description Amazon affiliate codes or the links to the devices that I review or so. Because there were a few viewers that actually told me, why don't you use affiliate codes? You could make a little bit of money. Why not? It doesn't cost the viewer anything. It's also easier to get access to the device that you reviewed. You can, you can check it on Amazon and... I would deserve it to get a little bit of kickback. And I always thought, yeah, at first, yes, I did it for a while, but then I thought I didn't really make a lot of revenue anyways. And it, I was just a little bit too lazy doing it. And once I started actually doing it again, just for the last two or three weeks, I noticed that I actually got something. Of course, maybe that's because more people are buying stuff now because of Christmas and so on. But... Whoever buys stuff with my links, either maybe he just saw a review, clicked the link and then bought something or uses because I right now use on every video like a, like a, in the description, like a credits for YouTube where I say you can donate to me on my PayPal account if you want to, if you want to be great and support the channel and you can also use the affiliate code. So I'm not quite sure if you people use the codes that I post for the device or use the actual affiliate link because if someone uses that or specifically goes through my links to buy something on Amazon, I want to give you a huge thank you because that's really awesome because I don't get enough of YouTube yet to actually buy stuff on my own yet because I would need at least double what I get right now and that's not going to happen anytime soon. Of course, the good thing is I get all the review units for free. I just have to pay for the shipping, which I can live with that. On some I lose, on some I make a little bit of money. That's okay. And like I said, it was never about the money, but I want so, um, slowly but surely, I want to improve all the stuff and if you maybe saw about my videos about my new PC that I'm planning to build, and I have all the parts right now, I'm just waiting to get the CPU, I have everything else. 
this costed a lot more money and just what I paid for the PC is more than half of what I got on YouTube since I started and that's just one part. I had the camera, I had the second camera, I had the lighting, the monitors, all that is way more than I ever made so I'm still way in the minus which is fine but if I can off Amazon make a little bit of a kickback for that why not because this month I, I'm, I'm at about I think $40 for about 20 days that's totally fine because usually i got like maybe 10 bucks a month from those amazon affiliate codes and what i noticed if someone like me makes 40 dollars in about 20 days on on amazon who doesn't really have usually many clicks on amazon that's a thing that shows me that if for example i would just expect to get maybe like 10 times more 10 times more views or 10 times more clicks from my videos to Amazon you could actually make really good money from Amazon affiliate especially if you review a lot of or if people buy more expensive device because if I review a $2000 device I get of course a lot more kickback than if I review maybe something like a $50 thing and I am pretty sure that a lot of YouTubers using these and people who and maybe if they all always say hey please use my affiliate codes it would help out my channel and if they actually do this they could really make a lot of money and if done properly I think they could even make more of an Amazon than they would out of YouTube because YouTube pays quite poorly because if I see I get like I think in a month on a good month lately one or two hundred clicks on Amazon which ends up in usually like five items bought this month it's a lot this time this month it's already 39 items so a lot more than usually but comparing let's say 200 clicks to what I what I get in a month like 250,000 views I think it's something about that that's a huge difference for what I get in comparison for both of them so Amazon definitely pays a lot better that's what I wanted to get out of the way time is still good subscribe to win and already subscribed would be the next topic so one thing that I I, I did already talk about already the uh, what I think of personally doing giveaways for my channel and that I'm not so happy about kind of buying my viewers but what I usually noticed and that's pretty much always the case. That's the one thing that you always have to do. If you want to win something from a YouTube channel, it always says, subscribe to my channel. And since I like you guys so much, I will do giveaways. But I think it's kind of lying what they do. Because see it like this. They tell you, if you want to be part of the giveaway, subscribe to my channel. Because I'm doing these giveaways to say thank you to my subscribers. But you didn't actually do that because if you would want to thank your subscribers, your current subscribers, you should do it like the way I would do it. You would say, if you want to be part of the giveaway, for example, leave a comment here in this video and only everyone who was already a subscriber of the channel will get to enter because that would be the way to say thanks to your subscribers if you say you have to be a subscriber then everyone will subscribe at this moment and that's the case why they do it they don't do it to thank the current subscribers they want to get more new subscribers and that's kind of a little bit of a of a tricking they do because if i want to thank i would only allow and you can check this you can see if you do a giveaway you can and someone would win you can see how long he is already a subscriber you can check that and that's why I think it's a little bit of a of a fake message if you say I want to give the giveaways just to thank you guys no 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 I, I won't let that slide I don't think it's okay and that's if I would do it I would only do it for the currently subscribed people uh, the next topic would be we viewers mistakenly see my hand on this video yeah 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 the thing is I think it was Dean Wallace a few times already said that my hands-on videos and first impressions or unboxing videos are already telling sometimes more than a review of other people to do. And what I noticed since I started to do more of those hands-on videos, which I do because first of all, lets people see my real unfiltered first impressions about the device. And then also since I have about more than a week between the hands-on and the review, it gives the people 
ch a chance to actually ask questions, leave them in the comments, which I will then consider to take part of the review. That's pretty much the most important thing for me. I get feedback already. I can see what I should check on those devices. I see what I should talk about, what I should mention about. That's why I do those hands-on videos. And I notice that a lot of people and these hands-on videos actually get more views in lately than the review itself. And many people really seem to tend to see my reviews or my hands-on videos as a review because Every time I do one of these, everyone says, wow, great review, thank you, it helped me a lot. And I thought, what what review? That was a handsome video. These are my first impressions. That's definitely not yet. That's just to see what I think first. And this is something you will see. Okay, now the fingerprint worked. It was because the update was loaded because I already got 6.01. Let's try it once again. How fast is it actually? Meh. 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 The Mate S was faster. So for everyone says it's stupid fast. Nope, nope. The Mate S was definitely faster because there I would just tap. But like I said, you will see this on the hands-on video of the one uh, of the 5X. This is just my first impression. And especially, I think one of the best examples here was the G8. I, I have right now, I think like 17,000 views on the hands-on and maybe 6,000 on the review. And I got a lot more positive or likes on the hands-on because there I was still quite positive about the device because I just got it in the hand, everything seemed good. Okay, I s even in the, in the hands-on video said the performance looked a little bit laggy, but in the review I actually kind of destroyed it because of the performance. I said, no, I wouldn't recommend the performance, just isn't great. And I get so many positive comments on my hands-on video, people wanting to buy this phone basing on the handsome video and then i say please watch the review because my impressions changed and that's why you should never see my handsome videos as a review what i usually did before i was way too hard in those handsome videos and people didn't seem to like that i bashed too much and that's why i started actually to do a live or a first hands-on in performance test and everything like that because right now i take a few minutes do the setup first install all my apps and then check it because this is a little bit more objective because the system will still have to load and I have a little bit of time to get some more objective perspective. Because if I check it first, you don't want to really be a device, a review unit in my hands. Why does the screen always turn on without me doing anything? That is odd. Or maybe if I pick it up, maybe the fingerprint scanner, but it's, it's no... No, no, it's no natural position for me. So, oh, where was I? The Ramble Joe is back again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was too hard. People didn't like it and complained about it being too hard. And that's why I take a little bit time to get a little bit more down to it. And yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to say. One question to all of you viewers. Do people use YouTube info cards? Because what I do every time, if I have something that relates to something else on a video, for example, a handsome video, once I have the review ready, I will include within about the first 10 seconds, an info card that will link you to my review and it should pop up, you should see it. But I still notice so many times that if I do a handsome video, set the info card. People comment to me just related on things about the handsome video as if my review wouldn't exist and then they have questions and all that questions that I do answer in my review. So if they would see the info card or use it, they could just even after 10 seconds, because I'm fine if you check the handsome video and you see, well, it's a review out there. Why should I bother checking the handsome video if he already had done a review? So I will just switch, but they still seem to watch actually the handsome video and just don't watch the review at all. So I'm not quite sure if they either completely ignore those info cards, don't use them, don't know about them. What is it? I would like to know from you. If you see an info card popping up, because already I had a comment that it said to me, I never use 
info cards. I never use links in the descriptions to different videos, which I don't usually do because I use the info cards, which I do. And that kind of did surprise me when he said I never use info cards because if I have something to relate to, I definitely do. I don't do, for example, if I make a tablet review, make an info card to a laptop review because these two things don't have anything together. That's what I think the recommendation list is there for. But do you use the info cards and do you think they are useful? I, I definitely think as a creator they are. As a viewer myself, I don't usually watch them either anyways because, but mostly because if I watch a video, I watch it very early from one of the people I watch a video on. If I completely a completely new channel and then see the info card, then I sometimes use it, but on a subscribe channel, not so much because then I watch pretty much all the content anyways. So that's it. The last really stupid topic would be Brad Rat. <laughs> and if you want to know what that is about, because the last time I used uh, already my, how did I call that? Ah, the, the German word of the day. So what I usually did always is translate a word and then talk a little bit about it. And since I last time did that with, maybe if you saw it, know the word, I don't want to say it once again. <laughs> I did it actually by accident, I didn't really think about it. I, It just came into my mind that it's really stupid, but okay. Bread and red, that rhymes on each other. Now, if you take the German translations of bread, it's Brot. And of red, it's rot. So even though I think it's it's not really interesting, but it's funny to see that even though these are two completely different languages, and actually bread and brot isn't that close to each other, even bread and red, which are spelled the same rhyme, brot and rot also rhyme as well. Same thing goes for rice. And ice in English, and then translated to German to Reis und Eis. Okay, I know it's silly, but I just noticed it. <laughs> it's definitely no big thing. So the video is already almost half an hour once again. Maybe? No, the updates still aren't finished. For some reason, my internet is still making issues. But I think that was it for today. Like I said, at the beginning, I am odd, and this video I think proved it once again. <laughs> and if the likes are as they were before, it will show me once again that you are cool with it. And if you are watching it in the background anyways, I think it's easier. This one was a little bit odd because I went through a lot of topics, didn't really go that in that much off course than I usually do. Of course I did. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Okay, I I wish you a nice weekend. What I will do, just a little heads up. The 5X Hanson will be coming this weekend. Maybe still today. And the best of video will come maybe then next week. If I get enough time. Did the screen turn? Oh, wait, wait. wait. Let me check why it does that. Because it has some kind of ambient display. Okay. Hmm. No, I am not sure. I have to check that. Other than that, bye. Wish you a nice weekend. Until next time.